Ryan. What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. He will be back tomorrow. Uh, we have quite a stormy day out there. So if you're in the area, make sure you're staying in. Just be safe and all that. Let's take a look at what we got going on in the markets right now. We have the ES Mini trading flat right now, about 47.90. We have the Russell Futures trading about 19.86. Again, down just about 0.87%. NQs flat, 16.820. Looking at the Dow Futures trading at 37,723. Kind of a flat market out there today. Gold's not done too much. Um, we're all kind of hinging on the dollar here. It looks like the dollar kind of wants to retest the 103 again, getting a little bounce going. Let me get off the three-year chart here. Let's go to year-to-date. That's not good either. We're seeing a little bounce on the dollar. Uh, might see it travel back up to about 103.25 area. Of course, with an increasing dollar, uh, you're going to get some downward pressures on the market as a whole, but it looks like the markets are holding all right currently. Uh, Q's trading at 40530. Uh, Google at 141.90, Meta 358.20, Disney down a little bit at 89.73, down almost about 2%. That equity is struggling uh, quite a bit. Apple trading at 184.48, and of course the SPY at 473. Uh, take a look at the silver contract trading about 23.14, and of course copper. We are actually down a little bit. We we're trading up in the 380 uh, area, actually going uh, close to the four bucks uh, on that contract. Uh, trading down about 1.27% right now. Uh, that's about $3.76 on the contract. You know, I've been talking about copper a lot when I fill in for Tom. And uh, probably without graphics, it seems a little bit nebulous, like I'm just kind of talking. But this right here is from the IEA, all right? So this is kind of looking forward to the certain kind of minerals and what's going to be needed as we make this kind of global transition into what we're calling green technologies, right? So this is going to be in batteries, uh, such where, you know, for EVs, uh, for storage in general. Uh, of course, they're also looking at uh, different ways of, of generating energy, uh, which is gonna be you know, something like offshore wind, onshore wind, and we'll talk about this a little bit. Take a look here, this teal color is really what we're looking at on these charts, and this is gonna be for copper, okay? And we can discuss some other things, kind of like uh, zinc and chromium going forward here, uh, especially if we start to lean a little bit more into nuclear. I know uh, uranium has had uh, quite a nice time. We're gonna have Basil on uh, next segment, and I'm sure he'll talk a little bit about that. If he doesn't, I will ask him. But we see this uh, conventional cars uh, compared to electric cars, how much copper is really needed, right? Um, of course, copper and graphite are going to be massive. The thing with copper is we're not producing enough of it on a global scale, right? So until we have some kind of really concerted effort, I would say, um, into mining more of it, you're going to kind of get this choke, essentially, right? Where demand is going to go up, you know, by 2035, you're going to see, uh, give me one second to mute this. You're going to see the demand for these increase, and that's just for EVs, about half, right? Um, and that's by 2035. So the amount of copper we're going to need to be pulling out of the ground uh, is massive. You're seeing that with, with Barrick, uh, who's looking to buy uh, one of the largest copper mines, uh, in the world and they're they're on that right and you're seeing a lot of other gold miners start to try to transition and adding some kind of copper uh, into their portfolio a lot of larger um, private equity firms are adding copper in as well uh, it's somewhat uh, inflation uh, resistant uh, but going forward i think this is massive looking into things you know let's say we go the nuclear route i think we see a lot of money being put in you know and this is going to be for generating energy this time not just for storing it um, in wind, right? Now, there's a lot of, I would suppose, controversy over wind turbines, right? Uh, they, they're massive. They require a ton of uh, minerals to go into it. Uh, and there's some argument that they kind of screw with the bird populations, which, you know, is something serious that we need to look into. But uh, let's say we transition into nuclear, right, which I do think going forward, let's say in the next decade, uh, that conversation is going to go up. Uh, we're looking at things like chromium. Now, a little bit later in the show, we can take a look at any contracts with that. It's not a big thing right now. Of course, chromium is relatively expensive for this, but it's still relatively unique. You can see in electric cars, um, we're not even using chromium whatsoever, and in conventional cars, it's non-existent. Uh, but I think the idea here is as we're really transitioning into kind of this, this new economy, right? And we'll talk a little bit uh, about a paper that I have here uh, that's kind of looking at the potential impact of AI and the reason why I bring that up right now is this is kind of like a brave new world, right? I mean, we're hitting uh, some certain singularity point 
where uh, I do think that the global economy is going to change vastly and rapidly, and the materials required to sustain that and really push it forward are going to be a little bit different than the ones in the past. Um, so I think the idea of kind of building you know, some portfolio for the future around what's going to really be necessary. I mean, obviously, right? I mean, that's kind of common sense. Um, but I think sometimes it's, it's positive to kind of slow down and kind of take a look at, at what that might be. Um, and so, you know, I, I think copper is, is a really beautiful concept. We'll talk a little bit more about that, too, uh, as time goes on. I want to take a look at Steel Dynamics. Uh, because they got crushed today. They're about 113, down about 3%. Of course, we had that high uh, right there, about 128.60, and coming right back down. I see kind of a testing of the last day with volume. We did blow through that already, but on lighter volume, so we might get a small bounce on it. Um, I'm waiting to see a new kind of trading trend go with this. Um, Steel still looking great overall in the market. I think Nucor was down a little bit. Um, Steel Dynamics has been underperforming. Uh, for the past month, at least. Um, but they do have earnings out on, July, excuse me, uh, 28th of this month. So we'll have to kind of wait to see what's going on. They have a relatively high PE uh, for the uh, their industry themselves. I think they're trading about like 11.8 or something like that for PE. So, uh, you know, fundamentally, that can be somewhat of an issue. They might have a less than stellar um, quarterly report. We'll just have to wait on 28th to see. Um, you can see this big dump down. I mean, it's not on really any significant volume compared to what it usually trades with. Uh, so I do probably see a bounce coming up in the next week for Steel Dynamics until we kind of figure out a uh, more consistent trading range. And I mean, you know, it's a great company. Steel is always going to be in demand. We have the Inflation Reduction Act, again, from the Biden administration that is pouring a bunch of money uh, essentially into building uh, new infrastructure and updating all this kind of stuff. I also think, too, once you're going to start seeing rates come down, again, we can talk a little bit about that, too, what the Fed has said recently regarding that. Um, eventually, when they do come down, steel will be in greater demand as well as buildings uh, kind of resume. We'll talk a little bit. We just got about 40 seconds to the break here. Um, TikTok, and we'll talk a little oh, excuse me. That's not what I wanted to talk about. Well, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. I wanted to get the actual story I wanted to talk about.